Hello. There is only one thing going on. That's what came to me to talk about. So we've heard this probably before, right? <laughs> Speaking about oneness, uh, unity, consciousness, how everything really is interconnected and how that's coming forth right now in within science. And um, what does it take to actually know that? That's a whole journey in itself, isn't it? <laughs> it's moving away from being a center of consciousness, a self-center, as if that self-center is really true. And, and how that happens is by starting to become really curious as to the set, felt sense of you being you, of being a me. And, and what, what all, that, all the little tendrils that surround that, that center, that nucleus, it's kind of like a gravitational force of nature. And it's very sticky. And it really believes that it is a separate self. I mean, looking around, you can see that there are objects, right, that are seemingly separate, including ourselves. But what gives us that, that sense, that felt sense of being separate, is, is this gravitational force of believing in being a center of consciousness. And developmentally, as a human being and as a collective, we are growing up over time out of that center of self. It's happening, you can see so many people are having glimpses of awakening, whether it's a glimpse or they're actually abiding in awakening. But what is awakening? Awakening is the dissolution of that center, that self-center of consciousness. And that, that veil of separation between yourself and other, yourself and life, poof, disappears. And that usually happens gradually, right, in a kind of hopefully graceful manner, sometimes less gradually, right? And we can sometimes think it's over, the journey's over, there's a... There's an awakening that can happen of, of the mind. And I've spoken to this before. Because that's what happened for me as an adult. And the reason I, I say that is because as a child, I had a sense of unity consciousness. I was very aware of it as it dissipated. I wasn't aware of it as it was there because it's, it's just what is. But as time went on, and as the sense of, of feeling interconnected and, and whole dissipated, and, and it was a really a difficult time period of my life around between seven and nine, when it really started the, the veils of illusion of Maya really took hold. And I started to feel more and more like a separate self in relation to life that had been mirrored to me by, by um, the adults around me and um, community. And, um, and so I went along for the, for the ride. No fault. But then as an adult, being able to, to remember what it is that is our true nature, which is that we really are one with everything. That center of self has to fall away, kind of like I, I kind of liken it to like a donut, you know, like there's a hole in the center. First, there's like a jelly donut and it has jelly in it. Oh, I can't stand those. And like you bite into a jelly donut and it's just this gooey mess and sick, sickly sweet. That's kind of like the, the self center of consciousness that we, that we develop that is just unnatural and sticky and, um, and, and really believes in itself, right? And over time, that, that um, sense of self, it starts to fall away, whether it's through being a mother or a father and, or in service, 
where it's not all about yourself all the time, right? Or grace, or it's usually developmental in terms of um, a, a journey of, of spirit, of soul. That's how I see it. That, that there becomes a time of return. First, there's the time of being born and um, whatever, if you believe in other lifetimes or not, that I happen to, to, to believe in them because I've actually seen it um, for myself and um, the way that it works for humanity. But that's my own personal paradigm. But the, the way I see it is that there's a birth of a self-center of consciousness and it takes itself as real. It's just a sticky thing to to be able to be born as a self-reflective human being where you self-reflect on yourself. And then there's a time of undoing, like kind of like return phase. So there's like up and then back down like a circle. And a return phase back out of that sticky self into being nobody over time. But not nobody like a like a, a depressing nobody, <laughs> but like a nobody that opens up to everything. Rather than being a somebody, you become a nobody that becomes one with all. And returning back to the donut analogy, so that center, the sticky center of, of, of the sweet st st sticky center falls out, and then there's just like this hole. And gradually that hole becomes wider and wider and bigger and bigger and um, eventually there might be just a tiny little lip surrounding the edge of what's left of this you that is a necessity to operate. It's a lot less than you think actually it's the you is not needed at all. It never has been. It's actually hijacked and co-opted the natural state which is which is True intelligence has always been moving and always been what has been uh, leading. And that's that sense of ego or something's not quite right. Well, that's that's getting a sort of the sense that like when something doesn't feel quite right, it's because the me is actually not true. There is no me. So that story gets to fall away over time. And as it does, a great blessing comes to, to fill its place. It's not like this big depressing thing that happens. Oh, I'm nobody, not in a glorified way, but like, darn. I've tried so hard to be somebody, you know? Well, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with your ambition. Good luck with your striving. Good luck with you wanting to be somebody. Good luck with you wanting to stay young and beautiful and vital and strong and healthy forever. There's a there's a there's a there's a return phase for everything and there's a reason for it. It can wear down our own personal will to not have things go our way. There's a very divine intelligence involved in that. Doesn't always feel good, it's not always easy. I get that. Um, I really do. But the but the kind of miracle that that comes is that is that we actually become part of the whole we we wake up to knowing that we are part of the whole we're not we don't just suddenly become part of the whole we just remember that we are already part of a beautiful interconnected divinely intelligently guided woven fabric of existence that is 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 already doing everything just fine, perfectly, and and always has, including our own demise. While alive, the demise demise of me, and then later of the body. But that's not the end. That's not the end, and and I, I'm not going to go into that in, in in this exploration this time. But that but but the the. The intelligence is ongoing. It, do, it doesn't end. It's not in time. So it seems to operate in time, and that's really the me. 
the sense of me operates in time and it seems to get older and and we hope wiser <laughs> but really true wisdom is dissolution of the self-center that's true wisdom not accruing more knowledge the intelligence is ongoing and never ending and it's super exciting to 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 be part of that once that awareness wakes up within oneself it is it is it's an excitement there's an excitement because the universes are are constantly creating themselves and dissoluting and so are we because that's what we are so it's actually a hopeful message to be uh, saying that the you that you think you are is toast and is a kamikaze that is going nowhere. And who knows when that'll be, this lifetime or another. But that's the, that's the evolutionary journey of every human being is to have a birth of self, to realize that we're actually emptiness and, and nobody to wake up into unity consciousness. And then there's, there's what's beyond that. Unity consciousness opens up into be, becoming perhaps a sensing being, nature itself, not in awareness of even being that, but being one with all, but just being, pure being, and being able to talk about it. How exciting, how interesting. Wishing you well.